Welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Francis Sichoni and my co-host right here is King KJ aka Kozia and today's topic of discussion is constitutional supremacy. So in our discussion today we're going to look at uh, this concept that is uh, in constitutional law. If you're doing your constitutional law you will come across the concept of constitutional supremacy and before we get into this, we would love to just define what the constitution really is. So, man, what's the constitution? Hey, a constitution. I think, you know, the word itself, constitution, is a word that we come across even before you hit law school itself. People that are doing business have constitutions. Companies have constitutions. Countries in themselves have constitutions. But today we're looking at what is a constitution in terms of the constitution of a country, right? So a constitution is a body of fundamental principles that a country adopts in order for it to be governed by it. Now, in related to the supremacy of the Constitution, we are saying that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, which means that all other laws, right, yep. come under it. Yeah, so the concept of constitutional supremacy actually comes from the constitution itself. So right here in Zambia we've got the Zambian constitution and under article one, subsection one of the constitution, it states that the constitution is the supreme law of the land, which is the Republic of Zambia, and any other written law, customary law, or any practice that is, is inconsistent with its provision is now unvoid. This simply means that the constitution being the supreme law of the land, is the law that is the big one actually better than any other law and any law that does not follow the provisions or that is inconsistent with its provisions shall be declared now and void to the, the extent nation. of the what of its inconsistency with the constitution it's the bible of the nation yeah right. come on yeah so um backing up the concept of constitutional supremacy we've had some cases in the country that actually lay this concept of supremacy out and one of the first cases is the um christian monolika yeah but before christian monolika i think we had uh, we actually had thomas Mumba in 19, 1984 yeah 1984 yeah. thomas Mumba came up in 1984 then christian who okay. yeah. May her soul rest in peace. Passed away oh, this year. She yeah? Actually passed away. Yeah, she passed away recently. May her soul rest in May peace. Rest in peace. Yeah. She contributed towards the law. The concept of supremacy actually was laid out in her case. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Thomas Mumba versus the people, 1984. Then Christine Mulutka and seven others. No, we don't know whether the seven others are dead or alive. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's a joke. We're not sure. sure. But yeah, um, Christine Mulutka and seven others versus the people was a 1995 case. So yeah, um, I think yeah, the most with important one is Christine Mulutka versus yeah, the people. But let's start yeah. with the Thomas Mumba case. Mm. Anyway, so with the Thomas Mumba case, right? Anyway, um, we just, you know, it's, it's, it's just a moment of enlightenment. We're sharing a few talks over, you know, a cup of green tea. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's fun like that. Anyway, the case of Thomas Wilber versus the people. Um, the applicant was standing trial in the subordinate court for an offence under the Corrupt Practices Act, Section 53, Subsection 1 of the Act, which required that where such an accused um, elected to say something in his defence, he had to say an oath only, thus excluding the option to malice an unsworn statement. Don't worry about what an unsworn statement is and what a sworn statement is. You'll learn all that when you get to your evidence. evidence. Yeah, you love evidence, but there's no such thing as an unsworn statement anymore. So yeah, don't worry about that for now. So the defense um, submitted that the provisions of the section referred to above were in contravention with Article 20, subsections, subsection 7 of the Constitution. Right? The subordinate court referred to the issue, referred the issue to the High Court for determination. The court then held that one, there can be no implied amendment of the Constitution. Two, an accused person charged under the Corrupt Practices Act cannot be compelled to give evidence on oath if he elects to make an unsworn statement 
Section 53, subsection 1 of the Corrupt Practices Act, declared unconstitutional, now and void. So you see, you have a contradiction between a particular section, section 53, subsection 1, of the Corrupt Practices Act. Which is a different law from yeah. the Constitution. Exactly. It's, it's a different law from the Constitution. It's contradicting with section 20, subsection 7 of the Constitution. Now remember, when we define what constitutional supremacy is before, we stated that the Constitution is a supreme law of the land. And any other law that is contradicting what the Constitution, provi what the Constitution provides is to be declared now and void, right? So, all these other laws that are created, including the Corrupt Practices Act, right, yep. is created only because it's been provided for under the Constitution, okay? Yep. So the Constitution is the mother act of all these other laws that you have, okay? So they are subject to the Constitution. So for the very fact that Section 53, Subsection 1 was in contradiction, with section 20, subsection 7 of the Constitution, it was held now and void. Yeah. You get that? Anyway, so that's Thomas Moore, but that's a 1984 case, which, yeah, it's, it's just where, just the case that brings it out. Christian Ludica brings out the same, but I'll let the host himself discuss it. Okay, so we get to the second case, which is the case of Christian Ludica. In this case, uh, it involved the Public Order Act and the Constitution itself. So, according to the Public Order Act, Christian Muludiga and seven others were not allowed to have a meeting without a police report. However, this provision in the Public Order Act was against uh, Article 20 and Article 21 of the Constitution, which gives people the freedom of expression and the freedom of assembly where people can actually meet whenever they want to so the matter was taken to court and it was a matter of law whether christian mundig and seven others actually went against the public order act and yeah of course they went against it but did they go against the constitution so the public order act was the provisions in the public order act were somehow not in line with the constitution so the constitution gave them a right the Public Order Act removed that right from them. And in the holding, the court stated that the Public Order Act was inconsistent with the Constitution, which gave them the right to assemble and meet whenever they wanted to and express their views however they wanted to. So the provision of the Public Order Act was declared now and void. So all this, you know, was just to lay down the pro the concept of constitutional supremacy saying the constitution is more supreme than any other law of the land quite frankly yeah anything else you'd love to add no man like nah. i think that that, that that pretty much sums Sounds up every year there are other cases as well that that apply to the constitutional supremacy but you know i feel like these are the two key yeah, these are the two key cases. Two key, yeah. But for further reading, you can look at the resident doctor's yeah, resident case doctor. versus the attorney general. Uh, mm -hmm. Similar issues. Similar yeah, similar. It's uh, about constitutional supremacy as well, though in a different case. But they will actually bring up the same principle of constitutional supremacy, stating that the constitution is the supreme law of the land, and any other law that is inconsistent with it shall be declared now and void so to whatever the level, yeah, to the level of its to the level of its inconsistency so if you're against the constitution you are now void yeah you're against the constitution yeah you're now on board. <laughs> uh, yeah so <laughs> this is all that we had on the concept of constitutional supremacy which is a constitutional law principle and we've come to the end of our video guys Thanks for watching. It's been me, Francis Sichone, and my co-host, Kozi Sikasote, and we'd love to say thank you. Thank so you. guys, um, a sub to the channel yeah, would be nice. A like, a share. More and, videos are coming. Uh, more videos are coming. If you, feel like, if you feel like you've got any suggestions or any videos that you would like to, you know, um, the comment that section. you want to come, hit it in the comment section. If not, um, just, yeah. 
yeah, you can state it on our Instagram page or Facebook page. Later, guys. Thank you.